All right, guys, I have to go. I have to go to do an interview with James Lynch, who will own the interview, but I've texted James and I asked him, may I air this? He said, have at it. So I'm going nowhere except to connect with James Lynch. He will be steering the ship and I will be his humble guest. Enjoy. You know who my next guest is? Chael P. Sun and the bad guy joining me here on the program. Chael, how's it going, man? What's going on, man? I'm doing all right out here. I'm getting ready for a holiday, a holiday feast, I must tell you. Yes, thanks for doing this. Uh, we had Canadian Thanksgiving last month, so this tomorrow's a regular work day for me. But uh, I wanted to actually start with family. Uh, you know, COVID-19, we got a lot going on with that, the pandemic. How's your family doing? Everyone uh, safe and sound? We're bored. Of course we're safe. Oh, come on, please. <laughs> There's been 18 other versions, let me assure you. Nothing for us to worry about, but yeah, man, we're a little bit bored. Things are slow. Nothing to do yeah. when there's nobody to do nothing with. I gotta, I gotta tell you, I've watched every television show there is. Well, you're keeping busy with your content. I think every day you're putting up a video. Uh, how busy are you with that? Cause I sleep like every hour I'm seeing something new from you. Oh man. Well, thank you for watching. That's nice of you, buddy. Not busy enough though. I, I mean, really there's, there's been so much downtime, so much, you know, staring at the clock and trying to figure out Trying to figure out ways to fill a day has been kind of tough. So content's been good though. You know what I'm looking for? Maybe you can shed some light on this. So you've got sure. Roy Jones and Mike Tyson that are supposedly going to box. The director of the commission says they're not fighting. Those two say they are. Now, Rafael Cadero, who's training Mike Tyson, says for sure there it will be a fight. This is of like 10 minutes ago. He says there'll be a referee and three judges. Is, is he correct or is the director of the commission correct that says there will be no judges? Yeah, I would have to go with the coach. I know the commissioner says one thing, but uh, you know, Cordero doesn't seem like a guy who's out of the loop with those things. So I would, I would sort of go with him. You know, what's interesting too, uh, because this is an exhibition fight, they're not offering any odds in the United States, but apparently offshore they are, which is interesting, right? Sure, that's interesting too. I mean, I, I would not go against Rafael Cordero. That is not my message. At the same time, wouldn't you have to side with the commissioner? I mean, if he's the one that's bringing the judges in, and he says I'm not bringing judges in. I mean, either yeah. that changed or we're not getting real information here. Yeah, I think it's a big deal. Point. I mean, you're the one that brought up the betting lines, but this is a big deal. There, There is pay-per-view subscribers that are selling this right now as a fight. And if a fight's not going to happen, that's fraud. It is, right. Yeah, false advertising, right? So we'll have to see sort of what happens. Uh, we're, you know, what, 72 hours away from this fight. So we'll see uh, when it actually, uh, if it actually goes to fruition. I hope it does, right? There's a lot that's gone into this, a lot of promotion, right? So we'll see what happens. I wanted to start with you, actually, with Bellator. Uh, we had a great card last week, uh, headlined by AJ McKee, who pulled off just an incredible submission here. You know, with Michael Chandler gone, do you see him as, as sort of the next big star for Bellator as a homegrown talent? Because they haven't had a lot of homegrown talent that has really gone on to, to do amazing things. I think that's fair. Yeah, I think that AJ McKee is really starting to catch on. You know, it's so much, it's so much easier to know when there's a live crowd, right? You either sold out an arena or you didn't. It's this really great focus point. But I mean, I can tell you the buzz around him is 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 real. I feel it. And the skills are unbelievable. I don't know where that I don't know where he's best at. I mean, I thought he was best like as a stand-up fighter, but every time he goes to the ground, his last two fights, he goes to the ground for less than a minute. He taps out somebody. So I, yeah, this this guy is he's a rare talent for sure, particularly that weight class. That weight class is so hard, any organization. You're the top guy in a weight class, and now you're, you're you're this young guy that's also undefeated, finishing fights on your feet, finishing them on the ground. I mean, I don't know what the I don't know what the ceiling is for him. Well, and I think the fight everyone wants to see, and nothing against Emmanuel Sanchez. I think he has a great chance against Pitbull, but uh, I think Pitbull and McKee is the fight to make based after what you've seen with AJ, because like you said, it's so unpredictable. You either see him get a knockout or like we saw a submission last week. Do you think he can beat a Patricio Pitbull? Yeah, yeah, I think he can beat him. I don't know that I'm predicting that he will beat him. I need just a little bit more evidence. Pitbull's another one of those guys. Like any compliment I give McKee, I'd have to give back to Pitbull. I never really knew how good Pitbull was until that fight with Chandler. It wasn't quite so clear, you know, just how dominant he is. And that's the great thing about the tournament, man. You take all the politics out of it. It's just the best guys, their skills are going to speak for themselves. It's a very rare thing. A lot of promoters don't want to do tournaments for that very reason. There are certain matchups that are more attractive than others. You're not guaranteed those matchups. So I think you're right. I mean, I think when this tournament all got formed, everybody's hope, Scott Coker's included, was eventually we're going to see McKee and Pitbull in there together. There's still some work to be done. You, you bring up Emmanuel Sanchez. But I mean, to your point, it appears that 
we've got two very special guys that are about to find each other. Speaking of special, we had a UFC card last week, and Davis and Figueroa gets a, another first-round finish this time over Alex Perez. I thought Perez looked good early on in the fight, just made a mistake and paid for it. He got submitted. What did? How did? What was your biggest takeaway from that title I fight? I thought the same thing. I wanted to see some more minutes there. I was, I was starting to enjoy where that fight was going. I thought that Perez really showed a discipline to his strategy, to his plan. I thought that he was showing that the pressures weren't getting to him. I thought he was really going out and performing. And I was curious to see a few more minutes, a few more rounds even of, of that performance. It looked as though uh, it looked as though he was the right guy in there for the job. And that, that Figueredo, boy, I mean, he'll surprise you. Figueredo never, never really gives up. He, he, you know, he made weight, which was a big deal a couple of fights ago or three fights ago. He didn't make weight. That's always a question mark. It looks like he's solved that and shown some maturity and he might be he might be gonna stick around for a while i I agree and uh just like you said made the weight, was able to defend the title but now he's got to fight again in two weeks uh you know just as as someone who fought yourself uh do you think he can make the weight again in such a short period of time because that's that's pretty tough on the body having to go back and, and cut that weight one more time i would assume it would be helpful i would assume you know to not ever get out of camp as they say or or to let your weight go or or get away from the gym i would assume the consistency would would add to the fact that yes he would make weight it's generally those guys that have been out for a period of time whether that's the traditional three to four months or they dealt with an injury it's generally that type that in a broad stroke has has more of the weight issues i would i would think the weight would be the one thing weight and conditioning would be one thing that a quick turnaround really really help is helpful with the co-main event of that card was Valentina Shevchenko successfully defending her title against Jennifer Maya. But sort of the big talk was that Valentina actually lost a round in the fight. It's very rare. She had like, you know, boxing odds heading into the fight. I think she was almost like a minus 200 or something. What was your biggest takeaway from that performance? Because I thought she looked great, but I think it's inevitable for any champion to look somewhat human in a fight. Yeah, I fully agree with you on that. You know, the one thing when you're fighting Shevchenko, it's you're, you're also going after moral victories. Like to, to go out there and just get your hand raised would be the big cherry on the Sunday. But there's other victories that can happen if you can survive a round by example or if you can make it the distance by example or in this case of Maya if you can win a round it's worth you and I talking about a week later nobody else is talking about that fight we wouldn't be talking about it had the fact that she not had this moral victory which was winning a round and it's a small feather in the cap and one that she probably doesn't feel good about but you and I as viewers did appreciate it we appreciated that maybe getting on top of Shimchenko and holding there for a little bit under the 10, uh, you know, 10, nine uh, must system rule is, is the most clear blueprint we have to beating her. I mean, the bullets, the bullets close to invincible. I appreciate that fight. I will tell you this, that wasn't an overly close fight. I think the announcers ringside were so surprised that anybody was giving any kind of resistance to the bullet that they, they oversold that greatly. I think if you went back and watched it on mute, it was a typical Shimchenko fight save one round where she got held down a little bit. A fight that I think is going to be a little bit closer that they just announced recently, Tony Ferguson, Charles Oliveira. Uh, let's start first just with, was this the right fight to make for Tony Ferguson? He wanted to fight in December. Michael Chandler says he wasn't ready to go. Understandable, had a camp for the backup spot at UFC 254. What's your assessment of this fight? Was this the right fight to make? I get it. I don't have a big problem with it. I, I thought they were going to go in the direction of Chandler, Chandler Ferguson, so it caught me by surprise. I'm happy to see something good happen to Oliveira, though, I mean, that guy's a killer. He's got an amazing record. He's been on an amazing run, but he's never had that dance partner that could bring him some attention. If he's as good as he says he is, as he's as good as his record shows that he apparently is, this will be the one to springboard him. I and good for Chandler. I mean, or, you know, good for Ferguson for stepping in and, and taking it. We're seeing all these top guys that are, are, are ducking and dodging fights or they need big carrots dangled in front of them. You know, good for Ferguson for saying, I want to compete by the end of the year. Okay, great. Here's who you're offering me. I'll do it. I respect guys like that. You know, we got so many fake tough guys in the sport right now, and we have for an extended period of time. I don't know how the fans let it go. I don't know how the media lets it go. I don't know how the promotion deals with some of these crybabies. So, so good for Tony. And good for Oliveira for getting the chance and taking it. Was this a missed opportunity for Chandler? I talked about how he had to, you know, go through a camp already. It's understandable, but at the same time, it doesn't get much bigger than Tony Ferguson in the lightweight is division it, outside of Connor. Is, is it understandable in all fairness? I like Chandler. You yeah. like Chandler. I've been personal friends with him for a decade. I, I don't understand it in the least. You you haven't okay. fought anybody in a long time. You signed a contract. You went through training camp, but you don't want to fight a top guy on a top pay-per-view of the year. That's understandable. I'm having a hard time understanding that. I don't get that one. It seems like a missed opportunity. I've been the first to speak up for Michael Chandler. I, I will not be the first next time. If this okay. was his shot and he did not want it, 
because of what? Because he went through a training camp. What? What? Guys are missing fights because they're hurt or they're sick or they have a loved one in the hospital. He's missing a fight because he went through a full training camp. I don't under. I'm not with you on that one. I don't understand. I think it's ridiculous. Okay. No, I like the honesty on that one. Where, where does this leave? Chandler? I'd like Who to hear your fight? standpoint. Wait a minute. You you said okay, that no, it was no, fair understandable. Enough. You're right. I skipped over it. Okay. You My said it was under- What what part of that are you understanding about? What part? I'm, in, of, I, I'm, part I'm of a little guy bit getting listen. a new beautiful contract, being launched <laughs> into a top spot, and not wanting to go do the heavy lifting. What part of that? Did you understand? I have a bit of empathy for Chandler in the sense that he he had a training camp and he was on Fight Island. If this was in Vegas, maybe a different story. But I do see your side as well, where it's like, you know what? You got to take the fights you can get. I guess from my perspective, it's like, I don't know what it's like to go through a full camp. So I don't fully understand as much as, say, you do or someone else does. If you're telling me, hey, you should reset it and go back in, I'll take your word for it, Chell. I'm not going to argue with that. But uh, in general, I just sort of looked at this as it's a little bit understandable. But on the on the marketing side, absolutely. Of course, you're not going to get much bigger than Ferguson because who's he going to fight now? Dan Hooker? Uh, maybe I like Quinta. I, I don't know who else is in that top five that doesn't have a dance partner right now. Maybe Paul Felder. Um, you're not going to get a bigger fight than Tony. Tony is still a big draw. People love this guy. And if you even suggest that Tony's going to lose this fight, I've seen it in the YouTube comments. People go nuts. This guy is a huge fan base and that's a, that's a missed opportunity, but it's Charles Oliveira's gain as a result. Sure. So. No, I agree with you because I think it does. It does have the question. Well, then what, what does, Chandler do right if, if yeah. we know that Poirier and Connor are tied up and we're led to believe that Khabib is not coming back and I don't think we thought that Chandler was going to draw right into Khabib anyway I don't know what other pieces are on the board does he stick around and wait for a Gaethje or does he, I, I'm open to all of those ideas but it, it does put you in a little bit tougher spot at least in my estimation or does he go back and he's a backup fighter you know don't forget he was a backup fighter for the Gaethje a uh, Gaethje Khabib fight and now we've got Poirier Connor, which is a massive fight. It would seem that you'd want a backup fighter for that. Do you bring him back in for that? I, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't have a problem with it, but then are we going to be stuck with the same excuse if that doesn't come about of which I had a training camp? You say you don't understand a training camp. Let me break it down for you very a guy <laughs> okay. sex, that's amount of time aside, and he works hard during those days. Who gives yeah. a so what? All yeah. of your viewers that are worth their salt get up every day and work hard. So a guy a guy set eight weeks aside and he worked extra hard. Eh. I don't know, man. I, I was disappointed. I'm still disappointed. And I'm not with you. I don't understand. Well, I'll tell you something. I disagree with you. I don't think Chandler is the backup to Poirier and McGregor because if Poirier is out, there's no way McGregor takes that fight, especially without a title on the line. I just don't see him. I know Connors and I'll fight anyone anytime, but he's also a businessman. And a Michael Chandler is not as big of a deal as a Poirier, in my opinion, but especially a guy he already has a win over. So I think if Chandler does fight again, it's going to be against a fresh opponent. I don't think they'll give him another backup opportunity, but we'll see what happens, Shell. Maybe when it, we do see what happens, I'll uh, shoot you a text and we can. Hey, you're argue springing all sorts of news on me. You just said Connor was a businessman. I, I would love. <laughs> Please put me in contact with his secretary. Tell me where his office is so I can pull up. I, let me know who his investors were and what capital he ever raised. I, that's news to me that Connor's doing business. I didn't know that either. You're From teaching me a lot today. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. We understand exactly. why we understand we're understandable why a fighter won't fight, and we understand a guy that's never signed the front of a paycheck is doing business. You're teaching me something. I got to tell you. Oh, that's good. Good to hear. Uh, back to Ferguson. Generally, generally, when you're a businessman, okay, you sign the front of a paycheck. Connor signs the back of paycheck. But if you're telling me he's a businessman, my well, mind is now blown, James. I okay. got to tell you. From, from a business perspective, that, that's that's what I meant. He's, he's thinking business-wise. Maybe he's not running. the. He's got people around him. He's got a crew of people. I mean, obviously, he's not pouring the proper whiskey or whatever, right? That's someone else doing it. Fair but enough. I just, yeah, I just, I just meant in terms of the business sense. Uh, back to Ferguson Oliveira. Who do you give the edge to in that fight? You, uh, do, you do know that the night that Hulk Hogan slammed Andre the Giant, Andre was cooperating, right? You're aware yeah. of that. Yes, absolutely. Okay, all right. I'm just making sure that we're, right? I didn't know if we're doing a work here. If we're, you know, I've known you a long time, but I, yeah. I didn't know Connor was in business, and I damn sure didn't know that a fighter could skip fights and we let him slide for it. Fair enough, fair What's enough. What's the next uh, topic? Uh, Ferguson Oliveira, I just wanted to mention that quickly. Who do you give the edge to in that fight? I was curious your opinion on the fight. I would give it to Tony, but that's because uh, largely because of what you see, right? I mean, we see Tony go out there and we see him beat up a lot of people. We hear that that Oliveira did. I mean, he just didn't have the same amount of eyes on him. If you go look at his record, you want to look at who's hungrier. I think that that's a very debatable topic. I would imagine that Oliveira is a pretty hungry guy right now. You have been a lot of intangibles in that, such as pressure. I mean, he's never been given a fight this high profile. 
Is that going to be a springboard? For a lot of guys, it is. We only know in hindsight. For a lot of guys, that's a real springboard. And for some other guys, boy, they underperform. And one thing that I think we have seen with Tony is consistency. You know, even in his fight with Gaethje, and I realized that was a very one-sided fight, but it wasn't one-sided because Tony shut down. He kept getting beat to the punch. He was trying the whole time. He was pushing through all the way to that fight was called off. He never once fell down and balled up or wanted it called off. I think Tony's a great competitor. And I see the same, I see the same from Oliver, but I just I offer for you that that would be the question mark. How is he going to deal with so much uh, attention on him? It, it, it's something new. He might love it, but he might not. Hamza Chimaev, we've got to talk about him. He's fighting on December 19th. Uh, there's a lot of hype around this guy. I can't remember someone in the UFC that's had three fights and gets to fight the number three ranked guy. I know the rankings are a bit, you know, arbitrary in terms of uh, some of the matchmaking, but uh, I actually think this makes a lot of sense because Leon Edwards is about as cold as you get right now. He hasn't fought since last July. He needs that to get that momentum back. And why not do that against a guy who's only got nine fights? What's your take on that on the matchmaking here with Chimaev and Edwards? I'm into the whole thing. And I mean, again, you know, you and I are, are shining up Chamayev, but it's the opposite of what you gave Chandler a pass for. Chamayev went through these training camps as well, but he went through the training camp so that he could go out and fight somebody. And he's offering to fight guys at two different weight classes and not offering an excuse in between. Chamayev will greatly let me down if he ever gets up in the loft and, and pulls the ladder up behind him. I mean, we see many guys that we get behind and all of a sudden they don't do what it was that made us support them in the first place. I don't predict for you that he will do that, but you know, if he eventually does capture one of these championships and all of a sudden starts talking like the rest of these phonies about this guy doesn't deserve it or I won't give him the opportunity, forgetting that at one point he didn't deserve it and at one point he was given an opportunity. And generally we see that. We generally we see a guy say one thing until he get and he comes out and says another. I like the booking for Chemayev. I, I don't like how long it took to get Leon on board with it. I don't see what a ranking matters. I don't know what any of these guys are ranked and I, and I do this for a living. I will never know. I don't even know where to go to find out what they're ranked. I literally don't even know the website to go to that will tell me what they're ranked, but I do know who's on the main card and I do know who's in the co-main event and I do know who's in the main event spot. Those are the only numbers or placement that matters. They could have a two or a one or a nine next to your name. Are you the main event or aren't you? That is how you balance and judge your worth in this sport. And for anybody to hesitate to jump at a main event spot on ESPN, shame on them. Do you think a win here would put him in that title contention? Because to me, it's about momentum. She might have reminds me of Jorge Masvidal. And let me explain why. He was the talk of the town last year. No one was more popular than him. He had Donald Trump come to his fight. He had The Rock give him a, a belt. Chimaev's kind of got that same luster where it's like this, everyone's talking about him. He's the next Habib. He's, and he's, he's backing it up. He's getting big, impressive finishes. That's what you need to do. Do you see similarities there in terms of the, the way people are talking about Chimaev? I do, but I think he's going to trans, transcend better. You know, don't forget Khabib, even at the time that he got that Connor fight, that wasn't even guaranteed to be booked. Had Canner's not been rolling when, when Connor broke into the Barclays Center, assaulted him, and ended up in handcuffs. I mean, in all fairness, Khabib was not a very big deal in North America. He is now, but I'm taking you back then. He was big in other parts of the world. Shamaya, Shamaya seems to already worldwide be a lot further in his career, which is only three matches deep with a fourth one scheduled, a lot further than Khabib could, could even dream of being at that time. So, I don't know that I love the comparison of Chamaya in because Khabib's out. I think that that's been a little bit unfair. Chamaya was already on the scene when Khabib was still on the scene. I'm not really totally seeing the similarities between the two other than Chamaya at one point tipped his hat to Khabib and called himself Khabib 2.0. I think that Chamaya is paving his own road. The other side to it is, I mean, the buck stops at Leon. You're either this good or you aren't. And for some of the, the judgments that have been passed on a guy who we've seen in there for not even one complete round seems a little bit lofty to me, but he's going to have his chance to prove it. Does he beat Leon Edwards? Who's your pick in that fight? Probably. Yes, he probably does. There's something to be said for momentum. I, I don't think that Leon got any better at doing a sport by not doing it. And whether that was COVID related or that's you know, some of the other rumors we heard where he was turning down fights, I, I really don't know where the truth lies. And it might've been a combination of the two, but I know I haven't turned my TV on and seen Leon in a meaningful period of time. And I've seen Chemayev three times in the last three or four months. So, you know, I think that there is something to be said for momentum. I think it favors Chemayev. Connor and Dustin, we talked about that fight. Do you think Connor can get it done again? Uh, this fight's at 155. Poirier has been more active. Do you, do you see him going out there and, and beating Dustin Poirier again? Of course, of course. I'm, I'm answering, of course, to when you said 
Could he get it done again? Yes, of course. Now, I will tell you, if you go back and look at that first fight, and you're using that as your trajectory to this next fight, it is interesting because that was an all stand-up fight for however long it lasted, but it was all stand-up. And if you go and look at Dustin's pure boxing of that night versus today, Dustin of today would get rid of that Dustin faster than Connor did. So I, I think that it's a very different match, but Connor does seem to have a speed advantage on opponents. And so it might behoove Dustin to mix it up a little bit, particularly early, get his hands on him, push him, pull him a little bit, not just trade with him. But even if we are left with the trading, I do at least maintain for you that Dustin is much better today than he was then. Does Dustin beat Connor? Dustin has ways to beat Connor, but he's going to have to deal with that speed. I mean, right. I, I feel as though rounds two, three, four, and five could be stronger for Dustin than round one. It's really going to matter how he comes out in that first round. If he takes a few of those left hand again, takes a few of those kicks to the stomach again, that, that can change a guy. And uh, Dustin, I, I do think technically is, is very, very good. Is he as good as Connor? We're going to find out technically. But pure speed and power, it favored McGregor then, it favors McGregor now. But under, under the, the, the unified rules of mixed martial arts, Dustin does not have to go out there and go jabs and crosses with him. There's other things he can do. If he does those other things, particularly in the first five minutes, I, I think it could change his night. But no, if he goes out and tries to punch and kick with Conor McGregor, he's going to end up like everybody else, face down and embarrassed. I'm going to take a little right turn here. What's your favorite thing to do outside of fighting? I like movies. I'm a big movie buff. Now, I, I've liked movies less lately because I used to watch them by choice and I've, had, I've been forced into watching them lately because there's been so, so much little other stuff to do. But there's some good shows out there right now, not just movies, just TV in general. I'm watching something called The Undoing. It's on HBO. Cole Kidman, a very good show. Very Hugh Grant's in it, good cast, but I'm only five episodes in. I wish they would have dropped it all like Netflix style. I would love to have binge watched this show, but I suppose I like watching TV. There's one of my hobbies. Least favorite thing to do. Oh, my least favorite thing to do is to have nothing to do. Torture for me would be a day off. If I ever, I go to bed every night, I look at my calendar for what I have to do the next day before I set my alarm. If I had a day off, I would not be a very happy guy. When you were fighting, did you believe in abstinence before a fight? What's that word mean? Means abstaining from sex before a fight. Oh. Were you Oh, for heaven's sakes. My God, you're talking about the sweet Miss Brittany here. That's Miss Brittany's <laughs> business. My goodness. I would okay. never abstain from Miss Brittany, I would tell you that. Okay. I like that. Uh dinner if you could have dinner with three people, dead or alive, who would they be and why? Oh, okay. See, now those are ones that you always reflect on later. I wish I had more time to answer that question. I would like to have dinner with Billy the Kid to ask him if he got away or if Pat Garrett actually shot him in the back. I would like to have dinner with, I would love to have, Bill Clinton would, I, something tells me would be a lot of fun. And also he'd have to answer my questions though. I'd have to, right, he'd have to answer what I would like to know about his time in office. And with anyone else, I'll throw Miss Brittany in there, who I get to have dinner with tonight, by the way. There you go. Great. Uh, great choice. Anderson Silva, does he fight again, in your opinion? Because all these promotions are coming out and saying they don't want him to fight for them. Yeah, that was a scummy move, by the way. That was a real slimy move of a lot of those promotions. You know, first off, they weren't asked the question. So they took a shot at a guy who they would have loved to have had at a period of time, who didn't want to come over there, made his decision, hung his hat somewhere else, and are now looking to get some cheap heat, make themselves look as though they're above Anderson by refusing a guy who hasn't even offered his service to I mean, it was a little bit of a slimy move, not to mention it was cold-hearted. To say you don't want to go, it's just a mean thing to do. So, no, I don't think we'll see him fight again because I, I think those promotions are telling the truth, and I think there's a, a much better way to go about it than the way that he went about it. Um, you know, I don't think that you should come out and just offer your surfaces somewhere. I think that you should have a finished product. He should have found a very specific opponent, taken it to the audience first to make sure the audience wanted it, then added some, some flames to it, and then dropped it in a promoter's lap. We just saw this. Let me give you a great example. Curtis Blades, who I've always really appreciated his skills, and I've never really understood why the audience doesn't like him. I, I've never, but there is. There is an audience against Curtis. It's always like, man, did I miss something? Did Curtis do something one time? 
Curtis Blades comes out earlier today and proclaims on his own that he's going to need a whole bunch of money to fight John Jones. Now, to tell you how stupid that statement was of Curtis and letting you in of the mind of Curtis and now letting me in apparently as to why the fans were ahead of me and never liked him in the first place, he was never offered John Jones. He now never will be. He, he just put a big bumper between himself and John Jones that never needed to be there because it was never offered. He could have come out and said, I'm the one to stop John. I'm the whole reason John hasn't committed. I'm the one they offered John to, which is why John never speaks about. He could have done all sorts of things to add some level of anticipation to then get himself the offer. Instead, he steps in front of the promotion and the offer before it's even presented to him by saying, I'm going to need a whole bunch of money. The one thing that the guy writing the check doesn't want to do. So he literally stops himself from getting any kind of traction or momentum to a fight of which could be the future champion of the world in John Jones before it's even discussed because he's that stupid. And I sit back. I don't know why people don't like Curtis. Now I know why people don't like Curtis. Yeah, no, it, I totally agree. He he misplayed that completely. You you never you never call your future in in terms of saying I don't want to fight. That's not how you get fights made. So we we're in agreement with that there. Speaking of John Jones, do you see him coming back down to two hundred five and do fighting you know Adesanya? Do you know if the F, if the FBI if the yeah. FBI gets a group of people together, a group of suspects? Yeah. Do you know how they will determine which one of those suspects is guilty? How by whichever one offers their alibi before they're asked it. The yeah. guy that reaches in his pocket and pulls out a receipt and throws it on the counter and goes, I couldn't have been it. I was at Best Buy. Look, it's timestamp. Boom, we got our guy. Why would you offer an alibi before we asked you for the alibi? I mean, this is just how the feds look at it. I, I only bring that to you because essentially this is what Curtis Blades has done. Any kind of topic or conversation or discussion, he doesn't even need to get in there and fight John Jones. Just take the headlines. Let you and I come out and tell the masses why that match would be interesting. Let us begin to tell the story. Curtis stopped us from even doing that. He came out and put a fictional dollar figure on a fictional fight, not to mention looking like a coward doing it. I've never thought that Curtis Blades is a chicken. He went out and fought Ngano and then begged to fight Ngano again and is currently begging to fight him a third time. I mean, Curtis Blades shows some real vigor. He's now publicly refusing a fictional fight that was never offered to him from a 205-pounder? Now, not only is he dumb, he's a chicken. Two things I never thought of Curtis Blades. I would have defended Curtis. I have defended Curtis. I can't do either now because he's turned down a shrimp in a fictional fight that people don't want to pay to see in the first place, which is why it was never offered to him. If anybody wanted to see the fight, it would have been offered to him. No one wants to see it, which is why it wasn't offered. And he wants make-believe money? Come on, man. Don't disagree with that. You mentioned John Jones there. Uh, Israel Adesanya is moving up to fight Jan Blakovic. Aside from being the double champ, I think it's his way of trying to get the John Jones fight. Do you think Jones comes down and fights him at, at, at that weight class because it, he's bulking up for, to heavyweight? doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Yeah, it's tough to say. I take John Jones at his word when he told us the only thing I care about in my next fight is that I get a bunch of money for it. I take him at his word, and we can like that or not like that, but if we're just trying to deduce, is he, I, think, I think he's serious. I think he even proved that by walking away from a title, and it does appear that he's trying to bulk up and go to heavyweight. Uh, good for him. I see that play. I see the parody. As a fan, it has me very intrigued. intrigued. To your point, the biggest fight he can get, which is if he's just looking for money, the biggest fight without a close runner up is in Adesanya. So it puts John in a little bit of a this flux, right? Do I want to, you know, keep pumping weight and seeing what I can shoot in my ass that science is yet to catch up with? Or do I want to trim down a little bit and come after the only guy that the world's ever actually wanted to, to see me fight, which is Adesanya? I mean, it's 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 one of those things. And he can't do both at the same time. You know, you can't be bulking up to 240 for Instagram shoots and meeting your greatest challenger at 205. I think that John's in a little bit of a tough spot. And I don't think that John can get any clarity. I mean, mm -hmm. right, the, the Adesanya fight only works if Adesanya brings the world championship with him. He only brings the world championship if he gets by Blahovich, which is, that's a big ask. That's a mm -hmm. big ask of anybody. Yeah. No, I agree. We'll see what happens. Uh, and in, don't in ask Curtis Blades to fight Blahovich. He'll <laughs> do it, but he's going to need a whole bunch of money, James. So don't even don't even think about asking him that.
Before we go, something we have never talked about before, and I just made a point of remembering this time around. There was that real estate commercial you did years ago, and it yes. had your phone number on the screen. How yes. many calls were you getting when that was released? Okay, here was the problem with that. It got put on SureDog. So the kids on the forum on SureDog, and so I started responding to them. Like it was mainly by text message. And so I was responding to them. And then they just started being nasty. They started being very mean. about, And I couldn't figure out where they got the number in the first place. And then I found out. Somebody tipped me off. I think they sent a screenshot or something. Somehow I got tipped off. I was on sure. I had to go get a whole new phone number. And that was a great number. It was 913-4444. Like what a great number. Just luck of the draw. All fours. How easy. I don't have the number anymore. I was going to say, you probably got a lot of calls. I think I know where the, the commercial originated because I don't think I've told you this story before. I used to work at Fight Network. We used to air Sport Fight. They used to have that commercial on Sport Fight. I have a hint that someone saw that and put that commercial on YouTube. They might have. I remember Sport Sport. I had some great memories from Sport Fight. Happened you used right to commentate here in for them too. I know you fought for them, but yep. you also commentated as well. I remember seeing you on there back in the day. So. Yep, Matt Lindland was running that. So I remember, you know, yeah. the Team Quest day. So we'd have a lot of our own teammates. I mean, Matt, in large part, had a started promotion because he was the guy's managers and was having a hard time getting the guys enough fights. A lot of promoters have done this. They go, you know what? I'll just start my own thing. I'll put my own guys on here. I only bring that to you because if I wasn't commentating or competing or not, I was there watching. I had a whole bunch of teammates on there. Horwich fought through there. Ed Herman fought Glover Teixeira there. Chris Lieben had a bunch of fights. Good memories. Uh, but yes, you're right. They had a little TV deal, and I went and I, I bought spots on there, and, and everything was fine until Sure Dog ruined it all for me. I think they grabbed the video, put it on their form, and that back in the day for, for you younger kids, SureDog was the place to be, the SureDog forum, for sure. right? That, that's where you used to go and check. And also, there's a spelling mistake in that commercial. They put they capitalized directly, because it says call Chael Sonnen directly, and the D's capitalized for whatever reason. I'm, did you know that? Huge mistake. I did not know that, and normally I would pick up on that, and normally I would complain. So they're lucky that that did go under me, but you're right. Chell, appreciate the time. Anything you want to promote, anything you want to plug, I'll give you the last word here. No, the last word. I mean, I <laughs> fake news is going on. You, Connor's a businessman. Oh, Connor, Connor's just big businessman. Yeah, okay, hey, Connor, can I have a job? Well, you know, we're not really hiring right now. Yeah, you're not hiring because you don't have a business. Curtis Blades, don't turn down fights that were never offered to you. That's despicable. Michael Chandler, don't turn down fights at all if you want us to get behind you. James, I've had it with you. Goodbye.